afternoon everyone. Welcome to our first Facebook Live for 2019. Today I'm here with Justine Osborne from the SunSmart program um, representing from Cancer Cancer Victoria. So welcome. Hi, thanks everybody. Lovely to be here. Yeah, and today we're going to be talking about a very important topic about um, being SunSmart. Um, we've got a few myths here to bust, which Justine will give us a bit of information about. I'm ready to bust. <laughs> <laughs> as well as some important information about how to make sure that you're staying sun smart. So I guess if we just get into it, Justine, um, the myth is, do you need to reapply sunscreen after you've been swimming if your sunscreen says that it's water resistant? So the key is water resistant, so it's not waterproof which means that you know it's going to help protect in the water for a little bit, but it's not gonna stay on forever. So the rule of thumb is that you apply your sunscreen before you go into the water, and then you reapply as soon as you get out. And uh, generally speaking, sunscreen should be applied about 20 minutes before you're heading outdoors to give it time to bind to the skin. And then uh, it should be reapplied every two hours or more frequently for the swimming and the perspiring. Perfect, thank you. And um, by spending extra time in the sun, will that help boost your vitamin D levels? The body has a great mechanism. So it captures the UV from the sun and um, it can um, you know, grab hold of it and it um, makes it into the vitamin D. But after a certain time, it just cuts off that mechanism. And so you only need a few minutes of exposure each day to sort of grab the vitamin D you need and any extra exposure will just add to damage. Okay. So you can't naturally overdose on vitamin D, but a lot of people think, oh, well, I better get out in the sun today to get my vitamin D. D. So I'm, you know, great excuse to get out there for a few hours. A few minutes is all a person really needs. Fantastic. And this is a very interesting one. UV and sitting in the car, can you get or have UV radiation whilst driving the car coming through the windscreen? You can and you can't. So the front windscreen is really good at blocking UV, but the side windows aren't as good. So say if you've got a young child in the back seat or something, they've got the side windows on both sides of them. So sometimes we recommend having like, you know, one of those visors or like a light covering over the window. Yeah. Um, and popping on your sunscreen. Some people, if they're driving a lot for work or something, even have the fashionable driver's sleeve. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And now talking about the levels of the UV. So what is a safe level to not require sunscreen or need to have sunscreen on? So the myth here is if the UV is less than five, you don't actually need to apply any sunscreen. Is that true? Well, that myth is busted because the <laughs> World Health Organization recommendation is that sun protection is needed whenever the UV level reaches three or more. Mm -hmm. And so we've got a great SunSmart app. In fact, let me show you something. <laughs> Here's one we prepared earlier. So this app lets you know when the UV is forecast to reach three or more. So for example, today in Melbourne, the UV is forecast to reach three or more from 9.20 to 5.40. So they are the times that you need to be using sun protection. Yep. So we ask you to be just as careful at 9.20, at 10, at two, at four, yep. because it's that cumulative exposure over time that adds up to a person's damage, as well as the number of sunburns a person has. Yep. So if it's three or more, sun protection's on. If it's below three, Generally, most people don't need sun protection, but there's always exceptions yeah. to that rule. So if you're someone that works outdoors, if you're up at the snow, if you're in highly reflective surfaces, or you may be on certain medications that make you a bit more susceptible to UV, then sun protection's all the time. But generally, following these times is what the average person needs to do. So that's a free app that people can download. Fantastic, thank you. And we um, put a link in the comments box after about where you can go to download that app. Um, and can you get sunburn when the sun is not out? Yeah, you can. <laughs> um, so, you know, UV is the part of the sun that can damage the skin's DNA. And uh, UV cannot be seen and it cannot be felt. A lot of people think of sun protection on hot sunny days and think, oh, I better get my hat out. But actually UV's around when it's cool, when it's cloudy, when it's hot, when it's sunny. Have you ever heard anyone say they got wind burn? Yeah, I have heard that one before. Yeah, that's another myth busted. The wind cannot burn you. It's the UV that's been around. But because it hasn't been hot 
the sun, yeah, it hasn't been top of people's mind. Mm. So it is about monitoring the time of year. So typically in Victoria, UV levels are three or more from about mid-August through to the end of April. Um, but following the sun smart app is a, a really good rule of thumb. Do not be guided by the weather, mm -hmm. be guided by the UV. Perfect. And Justine, I know that you've brought in some images to show us to, so we can see what sun damage actually looks like under the skin. Okay. Would you like to show? Yeah. <laughs> see, because you know this UV, you can't see or feel. Often you don't know the damage that's been done across the time either. And so a lot of things that cause damage to us, we have immediate reactions to. But this thing is just slowly seeping into the background. So let me show you this image, first of all. So I wonder if you can all see that. So that's a picture of someone just in regular light that we're gonna see. You can see their skin is quite pale, not too many freckles on that skin, but we have this wonderful tool called the Skin Damage Viewer. So it uh, shows what's happening be below the surface of the skin and beauticians typically use it to show blackheads, whiteheads, all those great things, <laughs> but it also shows sun damage. So this is an image of the person in the UV damage viewer. Are you ready for the reveal? Okay, we need a drum roll or something. Thank you. So, okay, so you can see that that is sun damage. So freckling, pigmentation, you know, melanin is the pigment in the skin that gives the skin its color. Yeah. And so typically melanin responds to UV. And so the skin says, oh, I've, I've got UV coming. I need to protect myself somehow what will I use? Um, melanin. So melanin comes to the surface of the skin and for people like me it comes up in blotches yeah. um, but some people get a tan and they think the tan is protecting them yeah. but the tan is a sign that the body's had some damage um, and a tan is a, a sunscreen uh, factor equivalent of about three or four so certainly more protective than mine but not enough to really get the protection you need. When we say you should use a sunscreen of 30 to 50, three or four is a long way off that. Yeah. So, you know, my skin starts off as very pale. If you think of the Neapolitan ice cream tub, I start off as vanilla. <laughs> Every now and again, I'll get to chalk chip. I may get to strawberry, I'll never get to chocolate. And <laughs> you really, if your skin is naturally vanilla, it should never get to chocolate. Yeah. Try and keep your tone as much to its natural tone as possible. Possible. Mm. Yeah, this image is amazing. Yeah, it's a bit scary and mm, quite very, confronting. Very when I put my head in the UV damage viewer, my face is completely covered with deep dark freckling. Yeah. Because that's sort of the cumulative exposure over time. And I grew up before I knew any better. But the good news is it's never too late to have an impact. So now I can slow that damage down and not add to it. Perfect. That's sweet. Um, another myth is that only blue and green eyes are sensitive to the UV. Do I wish that was the case because <laughs> I've got hazel eyes and that would be really nice, but it's not true. True. We're all sensitive to UV, all skin types or, uh, or eye colours or hair colours. Obviously some people have a higher sensitivity than others, mm -hmm. but anyone that's living in this country in this UV climate should take care. Take care. And. Um, is there any benefit to layering different types of SPF products on your face? So, you know, you've got your foundation on which might have a bit of SPF in it and then you put your sunscreen on. More products, does that help protect you more? Yeah, Max doesn't help protect you. <laughs> yeah, it's like 15 and 15 gives me 30. Woohoo! <laughs> doesn't quite work that way. 15 and 15 gives you 15. So, um, you really do want to choose a, a foundation or a moisturiser that you know feels good on your skin, but you still want to choose that sunscreen factor of 30 to 50. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And that's a nice segue into now um, the quantity of sunscreen required to put on your face to make sure that you have adequate protection. I think you've got a bit of a demonstration for us. Yeah, you thought the SunSmart app was exciting. <laughs> and then we had the pictures, just wait for this one. Okay. <laughs> this one requires a tube of sunscreen. And I'm going to ask you, how much realistically, mm -hmm. we're in a safe space here, so I'm just going to be honest, how much sunscreen would you apply to your face and neck yes. on a daily basis? Say in the morning, before you head out, you're going to put your sunscreen on. So can you just pop some into the palm of your hand? Yep. Okay, let's have a look at that much. All right, thank you for that. I appreciate your honesty. <laughs> now let's have a look at, to get the stated level of 
some protection factor, so that's SPF, 30 or 50 that you know the bottle recommends. This is how much sunscreen you would need to apply just to your face and your neck. So it's about half a teaspoon just to your face and your neck. Then it's another full teaspoon to each arm, wow. each leg, front and back torso, for to get that 30 or 50. So it's about seven teaspoons of sunscreen all up. That's 35 mil yeah. to get the four hours water resistance protection. <laughs> and we know people, let's compare, that's quite a big deal of difference. And we know most people tend to apply that sort of level of sunscreen. So that's why we recommend 20 minutes before you go out and reapply every two hours to keep topping it up. And the golden rule is, sunscreen should only be used on the parts of skin you cannot cover with clothing. The first port of call is your clothing. Create a barrier between your skin and the sun and then use sunscreen for those extra bits and pieces that you can't cover. Do not rely on sunscreen alone. Yeah. As the name suggests, sunscreen is a screen, not a block. So some UV will still get through it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's quite a difference, isn't it's it? It's quite a difference, but yeah. Look, here's a paper towel so you don't have to walk around. <laughs> with a drop of sunscreen. She'll probably it. apply some of this to my face now. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and our last myth to bust today okay. is the um SPF rating refers to the strength of the sunscreen. Is that correct? Yeah, so as we mentioned, SPF is sun protection factor. Yep. So you want to look for an SPF of 30 or 50. There's not a great deal of difference between those two, about 1.4% protection. So the key things on a sunscreen label is the SPF 30 or 50. You want it to be water resistant. You want it to be broad spectrum. You want it to have an expiry date that's within its current date um, because sunscreen will go off. You want to store it below 30 degrees because again, the ingredients can separate and it won't be as efficient. And you also want um, to make sure that you apply the generous amount. But the golden ingredient for a good sunscreen is not the price, it's about the Australian license number because sunscreens are heavily regulated by the Therapeutic Goods Administration and so if it's got an Australian license number on it, you know it's had to jump through a lot of hoops to get onto our shelves and it's going to be a good product. Thank you, that's a great point, the Australian license number, I didn't know that. Yeah, very important. Yeah, thank you. No worries. Thank you very much, that concludes our Facebook Live today. If you want to know more about um, how to be sun protective, we have a great article on the Jean Hales website, you just head to our news section. So thank you for joining us today, we really appreciate it. Lovely, thanks everybody. Be thank safe, you. <laughs>